The Stateside Soccer Show is now covering Ted Lasso. If that's a joke, I love it. If not, I cannot wait to unpack that with you. That's no joke. The Stateside Soccer Show now presents Believe Cast. We aren't talking about faith or ghosts. Do you believe in ghosts, Ted? I do. But more importantly, I think they need to believe in themselves. We are talking Ted Lasso episode recaps. So sit back, get ready for us to discuss all the tea. You know, I always figured that tea was just going to taste like hot brown water. And you know what? I was right. Yeah, it's horrible. Hello and welcome back to Believe Cast presented by the Stateside Soccer Show where we recap Ted Lasso Season 3. Need to clear the air here. Uh, Logan and I recorded a whole hour, 45 minutes, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour episode about episode eight. We'll never have Paris. And now you'll never have that episode because it was glitched. <laughs> it glitched out so bad. I'm not really sure what happened. I have the footage. I have the stuff. If I can get around to it in the off season. I'm going to try to do it, but otherwise we're going to quickly share our thoughts on that episode. We had a really darn good talk and then we're going to look forward to episode nine here, um, or I guess still look backward to episode nine as we look forward to episode 10, which is coming out in like 54 minutes. <laughs> uh, but I am Jordan. He is Logan. How are you today, Logan? Hello. Hello. I'm here. We're here, Jordan. We've made it. We haven't hit the glitch yet. So it's good, good to hear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's good to see you this episode, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was part of the reason why it broke down is my, for some reason, the camera shut off. Chrome was unresponsive on our program we use, and it was absolutely brutal. I'm, I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, it was there you have it. It was poopy. <laughs> we, man, we had some theories that were true. Um, yes, we did. But now nobody knows about them. So <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you're just making that up at this point. Yeah, well, that's why if I get a chance to edit it, I will prove it that way. Um, okay, we, we'll be talking episode nine. But first, uh, just give me your thoughts on We'll Never Have Paris, keeping them, I, I guess, a little short here. So I thought, um, obviously, with uh, the Colin stuff coming out, um, I think you and I talked about this. We thought that uh, one of the biggest things that was kind of central around that episode was uh, how how Isaac was reacting to it, how the team eventually was going to react to it. Because I think we thought, obviously, the team's going to know, people are going to know, the press is going to know, the world's going to know. Um, and we talked a lot about that and just uh, the fact that he – um, was closeted and that he uh, didn't feel comfortable enough even to to share with his best friend that he was gay. Uh, and they find out through a series of phone hacks that, that Colin is gay. Um, uh, well, at least Isaac does. And you and I hit it right on the nose when we said, you know, and you made a really good point to kind of bring it up. You're like, what, what was, uh, what do you think Isaac's reaction was? Like, why do you think he reacted the way that he did? Cause he kind of storms off um, and just kind of looks at Colin like, are you serious? it was more along the lines of like, we thought you didn't, you didn't feel comfortable enough to tell me this is the issue. Like I'm your best friend and I don't care. Right. It, it was a matter of like you, that hurt that you did not feel comfortable enough to be able to tell me. Uh, and you thought I would react in a way that, you know, I obviously didn't. So again, I, I really, and now that I've seen this next episode, the one we're going to talk about, they, they did this so beautifully like i thought that this was a really good representation of how um i imagine that a, a lot of sports would go um or or if you're a true good teammate that i think that this would go so i love that episode i think putting it together with this one it, it just works so well so yeah i uh I, I liked we'll never have paris i think that was one where we went on a rant about what is considered filler uh <laughs> because people it was yeah didn't like that you know we had a whole great conversation <laughs> on do we think michelle got proposed to and said no or was she upset that jake didn't propose 
we don't know that answer yet still. So just to kind of highlight, I guess, what we thought there, I thought that maybe he did propose and she had said no is, is kind of the vibe I was getting from her reaction at the end and um, the chemistry I thought she had with Ted in the bar still. Like she was, you know, making some good jokes with him and then also – where we kind of see where Ted, I'm not sure if we're supposed to see where Ted gets the whole, um, where like Dave Grohl learned drumming on pillows and blankets or whatever. If that was supposed to be something he had said that rubbed off on her or vice versa, but I don't know. There's just a weird connection in that episode. So I'm still looking forward to that. So I'm still tracking that as we didn't get a chance to see really an outcome to that this week. We both really liked the Hey Jude bubble scene. That's been a point of contention for people. So, you know, that's kind of where we stood on the episode. We thought it was was pretty solid, some good character growth. And the Keeley thing, I, I kind of set out that I thought that um, maybe this is setting up Keeley and Jamie uh, instead of... Uh, Keely Jack or Keely Roy because he took accountability for the leak uh, which is something she had said he never used to do is take accountability for things and just kind of interesting how we saw Jack's point of view is like well you shouldn't have taken the picture and not that people shouldn't have stolen it so those were all things we kind of touched on if I ever get around to like fixing that episode I will and then you'll be able to go back and listen to it the best you can But for now, we're going to move forward to episode nine, which premiered May 10th, 2023. And it was directed by Erica Dutton. Uh, Dutton, sorry, I don't know if I said that right or if it sounded too much like done. And then Chuck Hayward is the one who wrote it. And it's called The Locker Room Alphalis, uh, which we looked up when we were previewing the episode. And it was like birds of a feather is the saying it, it comes from. And uh, the official plot synopsis on episode nine here was Colin and Isaac's friendship is tested. Roy is asked to do a press conference. So, Logan, what was your thoughts on episode nine here? Uh, This one was great. And and I I thought that they brought some some main pieces back into this that the I guess a lot of the critics I mean I've loved this season and this up there all these episodes like I've not found a bad one really in the bunch um, this year and this one I though I felt was kind of reminiscent of the older Ted Lasso I guess the 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 one with more Roy the one with more of Rebecca and Roy and kind of those interactions but also had the really heartfelt messages in behind it so I thought you know overall I, I we got a lot of the characters back in that I really enjoy. Uh, you get a lot of Nate to um, Rupert being kind of who Rupert is. So overall, this was, uh, I thought, a fantastic one because we're, we're heading into the next episode um, with quite a bit. And I'm excited about the next episode because uh, I know the synopsis of that one. So um, I'm, a, I'm excited to see where these, I guess, storylines are progressing because we're kind of wrapping up here. We're trying to, we're getting towards the, towards the end of season three or maybe the show. So we're really starting to see, I think, these characters fall into place and get, get to where they're going to be. So that's exciting. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at the, <laughs> who wrote the last episode of the show here uh, or of the season. It's Brendan Hunt, Joe Kelly, and Jason Sudeikis. To me, that's yeah. not a good sign that it's continuing. I think that's like the three, big, <laughs> the three main people here. And in episode 11, the story is by Brendan Hunt and Jason Sudeikis with the teleplay by Joe Kelly. So all three of them are touching these last two episodes of the season. And I think those episodes will feel more Ted Lasso-y. I I, I do see that there is a lot of new writers on the season, um, which for some people might be why it is sticking out a bit. Um, Because if we look at an episode that was universally praised, Sunflowers, it was written by Joe Kelly, Jason Sudeikis, and Brennan Hunt. So, I mean, I think that's that's what you can look at and say, oh, okay, well, there you go, right? And some of the episodes that are not as favored are written by people that 
maybe haven't written uh, as many episodes or as many of the big ones, I guess you would say. Uh, but yeah, so I, overall, I, I really enjoyed this episode. Again, I, I see, like, if you look on the Wikipedia page, critical reviews, it's like mixed reviews and AV Club gave it a C and somebody gave it a two out of five. And I'm not like, and I, I see a lot of complaints about just the feel of the show. There's been numerous articles and think pieces, right, of what this season is missing and, and lacking or that it's too bloated now. But I really want to know how these people would handle a 22 episode season <laughs> because 12 episodes, I don't think it's been that bloated. I don't think it's felt that different from one and two. And we were really just watching season one right before this went into it. So, I mean, some things stick out like the players are not as crucial to, to some of the scenes that we would wish. Right. But over, overall, I'm really liking it I, I, again. And I'm finding this is going to sound crazy. Maybe you, so on our other show, we recorded today. I was very moderate takes <laughs> today. Maybe I'm over here in little hot takes. My favorite storyline these last like three episodes has been the Nate storyline. Uh, yeah. I'm just fascinated by it. I really am because we're seeing him grow and we're seeing things that he would have done previously that he's not doing now. Uh, what I mean by that is just to kind of skip ahead here when Rupert asks him for the guy's night and, and Rupert pretty much does like he did in what the first couple episodes when he says, here's Anastasia and he does like the same thing here. And, and Nate's like, dude, I just introduced you to my girlfriend. He doesn't say it outright, but Rupert kind of gets it. I think when he's like, actually, uh, I'm not feeling well. I just want to tell you in person I'm, I'm leaving. And I think Rupert kind of gives this weird look. And I think that look is because he does think like, mm, I know he's lying right there because originally Nate was, like, I thought it was supposed to be a guy's night, you know, when he sees the two girls there and Rupert, I mean, Nate just wants to kind of hang out with Rupert. He wants to have that person to please, right? He's a people pleaser. It's his boss. He's trying to please him and be, you know, a good worker, but, he's starting to see the cracks in Rupert as well now, I think. And you, you see how slimy Rupert is that introduction when he meets Jade, I can just tell by the yeah. way that Jade plays it. She's not impressed at all, not impressed at all. And we hear the same sort of story from Rebecca in the Zava episode, right? How he tries to make you feel like, your whole world and and he he's like trying to be very like intrigued by her but he's not doing it it doesn't phase her the way it phased like rebecca to where eventually she would le like she would get into a relationship with him knowing that he is in a relationship jade just didn't seem that impressed by it and i think he got the hint with there and then he does the whole like later to Nate calling her a different name, like Kate or something. Right. And it's like, no, it's Jade. And I don't know that whole storyline. I've just been really pleased by, I can't wait to see the downfall of Rupert. I'm hoping it's coming in these next few episodes. Cause we know he's cheating on Keely Hazel's character, Bex. Uh, Rebecca called him out on that. He he's just at this dinner. Nate leaves. He, he hangs out there with the two women. So I'm, I really want to see the downfall of Rupert. And I wonder how that'll play off because the team is doing very well, right? West Ham is doing very well. So I, I really wonder, will he like, w will they win the league? And he just loses his whole personal life. I'm, I'm kind of interested in how this whole Rupert thing plays out. Yeah. I would be interested to kind of see how that goes. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe there's an instance where he is out by the board because of the relationships that he's having. And it's just too much and maybe ownership or, you know, but he is ownership, I guess. But like, uh, oftentimes what you'll see is uh, the club or the fans or the board will oftentimes say, you know what, enough's enough. We know you own the club. We know you, but, but you need to leave. Um, and that, that happened. The Premier League could do it too, ultimately. So I, yeah, it is interesting. I wonder what'll happen. Cause like you said, there, there, I feel like he's got to, something's got to happen to Rupert. But I don't know what it is that'll 
I mean, maybe it's financial fair play. I don't know. I have no idea. Like, I don't know what'll come down the line for Rupert, but you do feel like eventually he's got, like, we've only ever really gotten Rupert getting got at least once that I can remember. And that was Ted when he played darts, when, when Ted won, like, that's the, that really is the time where I'm like, they really shoved it into Rupert's face. Um, that, and I guess maybe when they signed Saba, but other than that, I just feel like he, he's gotten away with it, right? He's gotten away with being the skeezy slime ball. Um, and like you said, Jordan, I, th- I felt like that whole scene, he just like, it gives you, and it just kept going and going of how he tried to manipulate and tried to seduce or whatever he was trying to do um, with Jade. And she, you could just tell it was just like hitting nothing. It was like, oh, oh, no, nope, you're an awful person. So good for her. I love that. Um, and we'll get to, I, I mean, I guess we can say it here, that end scene with, with Nate and Jade when when they do have that dinner and, and Nate does leave and Rupert does give him that look of like, why did I bring you here kind of thing? Um, like, I've done so much for you. You can't do this for me. Um, I feel like, you know, Rupert has that feeling. But then Nate goes home and hugs Jade and kisses her and was like, you know what? Like, it's almost like that I felt awful for just being even considered that that was something that I would do. So I did like that part. That's funny. I got a whole different vibe from Rupert there. I felt like it was, you know, of course, I think Rupert's trying to corrupt him. Yeah. But also, like, when he leaves, I think it's like, I didn't get, like, this vibe that you said of, like, the why can't you do this for me? I feel like Rupert would kind of be like, all right, more for me is kind of the vibe I get from Rupert. But I, I don't know. I just find that storyline to be the most intriguing so far because there is just so many variables there. I don't know how they wrap it up in three episodes. Um, and again, so maybe there is a fourth season. I don't know, but they were talking about all these original arcs that they had and all those original arcs are still ending this season. So if they do anything outside of this season, it's going to be new arcs for these characters. And like Sadeka says, it has to feel like important, like something that they actually would want to do and not just making a fourth season to make a fourth season. So to me, that means I feel like most of the stuff should be really wrapped up in the next three episodes. So, so kind of curious to see how they wrap up the Nate storyline. I think that he'll have to have some sort of rendezvous with Ted again. And then I, I don't know what is it. I, does West Ham win the league? Does he expose Rupert? Does he quit? and try to get at Rupert that way? Or how does he get out of this situation? And again, I I think, you know, Rupert being real slimy, right? Like one of the lines that stuck out to me was when he says that, you know, Jade works at my favorite restaurant. And he says, oh, I can see why it's his favorite, you know, because, you, you know, because you're the hostess type thing. But we know Nate had already liked that restaurant for years before that. So Rupert's thing is like, it's an angle. Oh, you go there because you like the hostess. Because that's what Rupert does. He goes to the bar to hit on Rebecca, right? That's now his place he's always hanging out at. Now he goes to this bar and he's hanging out with these girls because of blah, blah, blah. Like for him, it always feels like there's an angle to something. So he'll always be more. That's the kind of the cynical view I think he had of Nate too is, oh, you're working an angle. Yeah, she's she's the hostess of your favorite restaurant. Probably because you walked by and saw her and you wanted to talk to her. No, he always really did like that place and then made a connection with her later over how much he liked the place when Anastasia left. So I don't know. I, I think it's uh, all pretty interesting. All right, so I guess let's talk about uh, Colin and that you kind of alluded to it at the beginning of the episode when we were referring to last week and we kind of got this one, right. We thought Isaac was going to be upset that not that he was gay, but that he was um, not able to tell him about it. And we get this whole thing, right. Where one of the fans, uh, you know, Isaac's being real aggressive the whole time, even when, like Colin's just making a bad back pass. He's like flipping out. 
stuff like that. And then, you know, he gets in this whole argument with a fan because the fan uses the F word, F-A-G, not F-A-F-U-C-K. And Isaac goes off. He climbs into the stands and starts going off. And that's where we kind of see that, oh, it is that he's just upset that he wasn't told because he does stand up in the locker room. He says, what if one of us was gay? I couldn't let them hear that. And that made some people think Isaac's gay, but you know, it was him kind of covering for Colin. He never out at Colin himself. And once everyone seemed to be kind of cool with it, Colin does stand up and say that he is gay and we get some lovely scenes here. Yeah, that, that that scene, I was like, I I was like the whole time going, he's gonna go up there, like that whole scene. It just has you on edge, and it's like you see it so many times too. Like you see that reaction that a player has, or it's just that build up of I'm angry, and one little thing could set it off, and it is something like that. It usually is homophobic or racist or whatever it might be uh, that sends that person into. A whole different mode because they're all human and i think again like we've we've talked about um and isaac has uh this is one of the best acting jobs that um i don't know the guy's name that acts for for isaac but um it's a it's a fantastic moment because i think he he plays a part where i mean it it kind of was like when sam obasanya goes crazy when he's uh, when the racist things are being said to him on twitter Isaac kind of has that similar, like we're human too. And you, you know, fans are just sitting out here yelling whatever they wanted. Um, I think it was, it's kind of one of those intense moments where they had to put in some kind of joke. I love Higgins joke in this moment too, when he's in the locker room, <laughs> and the guy says that stuff and Higgins comes in and he goes, Oh, sorry. I think he says, Oh, sorry for my uncle. That wasn't very nice to him. And they all kind of, yeah, like, he's like, Oh, sorry. Wrong time. Yeah. <laughs> He goes, I guess that joke doesn't fit here. Uh, I love him. Yeah, yeah. He says, the person has been removed. I apologize for my uncle. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cola Bocchini is who plays Isaac, by the way. Gosh, he was great in this episode. Like, he and Roy's interaction after this was so good. Like, in the boot. Yes. And once again, freaking Kitman Will is brilliant MVP. once again. Just brilliant. Yeah, he was. He he was pretty he was pretty great. Um I will say there was just I, I would say th- some of this was a little after school specialish. And and I think sometimes that's like the writing, or maybe it's the acting or the directing. I can't really tell you what the issue was, but uh when he stands up and just says like what if one of us was gay? Yeah. It, it felt a little like after school specialist, you know, but whatever, uh, you know, people do need these lessons as we're learning still, um, even into adulthood, the way people treat people. So um, I can excuse it. Uh, but yeah, so he gets a red card. He goes out. They actually go out and get a win. Colin scores, oh, assists two of the goals. And he wins man of the match. He comes back in. They're all celebrating. We get this nice scene too where, where Colin and Isaac are playing video games. And he asks like who the fittest person on the team is. And it's Bumper Catch? Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> okay. Isaac's like, real, like I want to say it, but it's not, right? It's, it's Bumper Catch, isn't it? And Colin's like, yeah, like shockingly it is. Yeah, yeah, that that's interesting. Uh, like the fittest person is is Bumbercatch, and of course, if you're not British, if you don't know what fit means, they, that's like their way of saying hot. Because fit, I know you're probably thinking like built. Like if you're listening into this, you're like, what? There's a little bit of a wrinkle there with, uh, with with some of that. But uh, yeah, no, I, I thought it was a very, very fun episode and storyline and i'm glad it's kind of culminated now uh because it was kind of set up when early in the season and kind of just kind of fizzled in the background a bit and kind of came back up in sunflowers and then kind of fizzled away a bit and then came back up so very glad that the whole team knows now and what colin does say is that he's only telling the team he's not going 
public with it. So I, I do think, wonder if that'll change with Trent's book. Yeah, I think so. But I, I do love uh, the Ted Lasso. Uh, it's so Ted Lasso. Like he gets in front of the locker room after this comes out and he's, he's making comparison. He's trying to draw a connection to a real I'm a Broncos fan. <laughs> yeah. And Colin goes, coach, did you just compare being gay to being a Denver, Denver Broncos fan? <laughs> and Jamie's like, what's a Denver Broncos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he says it's like a, a slightly below average NFL. T- don't worry about it. You don't need to know about the friend Denver Broncos. <laughs> like, but his point was valid. It was, it was. you know, because people do say it, it's kind of the equivalent, right, of saying, I don't care if you're gay. Like, it's yeah. almost the same equivalent of, I don't see color. But that's not what the issue is. The issue is that we want to celebrate. We do want to see the color, right? And yeah. we do want to celebrate that person for what they are. And, you know, they have different culture, they have different values, you know, they have different things going on. With with this, what Ted's trying to say is, we do care, we care because it's you, we want you to feel welcomed, this, you know, equating it to the guy who is their Denver Broncos fan, who's sitting in a basement alone watching them, what, lose two Super Bowls or whatever, not having anybody to... Sorry, I'm laughing because of the three thousand dollar damage or whatever to the toilet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he used to great. dip by himself. Um, so, so you get that whole storyline, and you know that little tale from Ted that's saying, "If I was really his friend, I should have been there. I should have been there with him through it." And what he's telling Colin is, "We do care. We're with you. We're gonna, you know." go through your struggles with you. Maybe not to the extent that Colin's going to go through struggles, but they're going to be there for him. They're not just going to say, we don't care. You're cool with us. They're actually going to physically care and be there. So I, I kind of liked that. Yeah, no, I did. It was, it was like the, how did he phrase it again? It was like, uh, you know, it was, it was like, I, I do care because for, for so and they, many people, they do a pause. Care. Yeah. To make you think like, oh, Ted's a right. homophobe. Right. <laughs> what a yeah. twist that would have been. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, especially with the Get out, these writers would have been like, no, <laughs> you're done. Like, done. Apple would have been like, cancel it. We're done. We're done dealing with this crap. <laughs> like, no. Jason, you really, like, everything would have just blown up. Like, it would have been <laughs> like, this like, we can't show. air this. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been like, geez, we are, it was such a show about inclusivity and equality and, and just, like, you felt so good, women's rights, everything else, but it gets to this and it comes to a head and Ted's just like, <laughs> no, I don't like the gays. It's like, <laughs> what? Yeah, um, it's, so. it's, it's, so obviously a new... Yes. When it did the pause, yeah. you're waiting for him to say yeah. it. But I do wonder if some people are like, "Ooh, okay, yeah. Ted's not for it." But yeah, yeah. And generally, though, where he, generally where he comes from, I think that's why people thought maybe that wasn't a topic they breach, but they breach it quite often. So it's you know at least where Ted Lasso comes from, um, because in the in the heart of Kansas, that's not something that is typically um, you know. So I think. Again, I, it, it is interesting that they, they do it that way. And I do like the way that they did it. It was like, no, we should. Ashley took it a whole different step further. We were going to talk about a whole different topic of where where that person that ended up being so alone, what they might resort to for being so alone. Because you do see a, a high suicide mm. rate in, in people that do feel like they can't talk to anybody about it. And, so. and not you also see a high suicide rate <laughs> in in minorities yes uh, yeah. like the lgbtq um uh, plus right. uh community right where they don't feel accepted and they don't have yeah. anybody to turn to because they feel like they'll be rejected and 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 being in a national worldwide stage right i mean logan you and i used to talk on stoppage time soccer show before stateside soccer show we used to mm-hmm. talk premier league that's where richmond is in we would be talking about this in america Right, you would have people talking about it in Australia. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's a worldwide stage. It's not just Richmond, you know, yeah. in London. It, this would be a story everywhere. It's like the most watched soccer league. It is, especially in the English language, I guess you would say. But so you could feel alone in that, mm-hmm. and um, 
and I'm sure he was worried about, you know, how Isaac is acting and after seeing yeah. his phone and he's, you know, he's probably like, did I lose a friend? And then not only that, but will the friend slip up? Yeah. Will they hate me? Will they tell other people? And now I'm, you know, a pariah type of thing. Yeah. I will say that the one thing that I, I love about this show so much is just the, I don't know if it's naivete or, or, what it is that I, maybe because Ted just, I don't know what it is, but like, there's like this, there's always this instance with Ted where he, he kind of looks and he always does this. He gets in the locker room and he's, like, and he's looking around going like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> like, why is everybody so upset? And he's, it's not dumb, but he's like, I don't know what it is that he just, but I love it. Like, I love well, it. I like when he comes out, he's like, I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> yes. You know, it's it's like, that's what you'd ask. You're like, now we're yeah. down a man. Right. Right. But he does. He has that very like easy go. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know how to explain that, but he's got like this lovable trait where it's, it's very much like, I think because he just assumes everything is, is going to be good in life. And that, that, you know, if you're just open and honest, and I think that's the way he kind of lives, he just assumes everybody else is, but then there's kind of like that snap back into reality when Ted goes, there really are people that struggle to who cannot be as honest as I am. And, and people really struggle with that. I think that's, that's ultimately what I get to. Like, that's how I can understand how Ted Lasso reacts to that. Cause it's not normal. Like it's not, it's not something that like we all live with, right. That, that ability to just be honest and open and, and really just yeah. have that care for everybody else. Like you, and he assumes everybody else does, but he knows they don't. So it's, it's a strange kind of thing, but I like that about it. Also liked when Jamie's asking for the captain band. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and Sam flips them off. He's like, "Oh, you want this?" And he like yeah. flips them off. And then when they all go in and they do the huddle, and Sam says something, you know, super long, and then they like repeat it back. Um, just that—that that was a lot of fun too. Oh, I like Jamie, Sam. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say Sam and and Phil, who plays Jamie, has have they both been fan like. They really have. They've found some really good actors and actresses um, in this show. Like, I just feel like they hit casting out of the park every single time. So it is, it's a lot of fun to watch. All right. Uh, so I guess what was the other big storyline this episode? Um, I guess Keely, like, kind of. I mean. Was she? Uh, Keely and Jack, I guess, broke up. Like, uh, but that's oh yeah, we knew Jack. Yeah, yeah, Jack's not. That's right. Jack is not answering her text. Yeah, and Keely sent like fifty in a row. Um. So so that is minor, but like, I had never done that. By the way, I mean maybe yeah. I do it to Joy, like somebody I already am married to, where I'm yeah. like, hey, you're not answering, but. <laughs> I kind of got the hint if they didn't respond. <laughs> you know, like, I, I follow all these accounts on, on, like, Twitter and stuff, right? She rates dogs. If you look at that, it's not dogs. Yeah. Like, dogs. It's it's men who are, like, one of those where they'll be like, I'm a nice guy. And be, like, talking, and then the person doesn't respond, and they just start calling her the B word. And you're like, whoa, like, you're going zero to a 100 right now. And I... It's crazy how many people do that. It is insane. I I didn't think it was that, you know, it's something you and I yeah. never really had to deal with, right? Because we're guys. We don't get those type of messages out of the blue the way women do. And, you know, for some reason, guys will think that girls are into them just for being nice or, you know, whatever. But usually I take the hint when I was in the dating game, you know, of, okay, they didn't respond. <laughs> I maybe try one more time, like, Hey, and then if there's nothing, it's like, I think this is done and just move on. Right. And you know, that it's funny. You kind of seeing Keely do that to another woman too. Like, this is something that is kind of different for Keely. I, I don't know if we're supposed to be, believing that this is her first relationship with a woman. I, I think we're led to believe that. I'm not really sure, but she's kind of not sure how things should be going as it is. And 
really, I'm I'm kind of shocked that they had her be messaging her at all. The way Jack acted in the last episode, I'd be kind of done with her. So I, when it opened up and they're they're kind of talking about their breakup per se, when she's talking with Rebecca, I did not think that she would have been like contacting her. What she she did respond, I think Jack said to say that she's like in Africa or something. South and America, I think. South America won't yeah. be back for like months or whatever. So that's kind of done. I guess we're done with Jack. I can kind of see people's complaints with this and Zava of if they come in for like three episodes and they're gone and they were led to believe to be a big storyline and they're not. So I can kind of get the frustration with that. But I don't know. I think this Zava led to Jamie becoming a better player and a better person. and. I think the Jack stuff has led Keely to kind of knowing more about herself. And I hope that's kind of where they go with it. I, I kind of hope that they kind of move on from Jack. Maybe now she does realize she wants to be with Jamie, or maybe she's happy being by herself and just chatting with Rebecca. I don't need Keely to end up in a relationship with anybody. I think it would actually be kind of refreshing if the show ends with her not making a huge romantic gesture or becoming entangled with somebody. I think that might be more interesting. But ultimately, I'm kind of down for whatever they're giving us right now. So that's all I can really say about the the Keeley storyline. I think all we have left to talk about now is Roy and his press conference thing. I'm actually surprised they put this in the description because it was very brief and it didn't really affect much. And we were wrong on kind of how we thought that'd be implemented. It's just because Ted was busy. I I don't really know. He he, Roy kind of skimps out on one earlier because Ted was busy and (laughs) beard had to do it. And beard, completely one goes off the rails. They're talking about guitarists and <laughs> bands and he yeah. is going off on people. And then, you know, we have this whole Rebecca storyline where she's like, Roy, if I tell you to do it, you do it. So then we kind of come back around to where um, Roy is asked to do this uh, thing. And he comes out there and gives this nice story about how he was kind of a dick to somebody when he was at Sunderland and it turned out that they had actually lost the baby and he didn't know that, but it's, it's kind of one of those things where his point was, you can't kind of just say what you want to say, right? Uh, The players deal with so much abuse and he was kind of sticking up for Isaac a bit, but saying we don't really condone it, but you also can't say whatever you want. And Isaac's going to get, you know, he got the red card. He's probably going to get fined. He's probably going to get a suspension. And there's that. And that guy is now banned from the stadium. So, I don't know. I, I kind of liked it. I kind of get what he was going for, but wasn't a, com- a a real direct one-on-one comparison. Yeah, but I do, I, I do think it's realistic in the fact that, like, this is what normally happens when guys are disciplined, that, that they were probably standing up for the right thing. It was just, you know, that's not the way we do it kind of thing. And you do see that quite a bit in sports where it's like, while the, while the sentiment was good, uh, I I think it just, it, there's better ways to handle it. Um, And I think Isaac knows that. I think he knew it right away when he did it, but um, oftentimes you do see that. But I, I do, I think that this, you know, with Roy doing the press conference with Roy in this episode, um, it wasn't, it was like, yes, they had to do it. And it kind of helps explain like the Isaac thing and, and Roy doing that. But I think the main reason why they wrote this in was when Rebecca sits him down to talk to him, like Roy, like you can't just skip press conferences because he misses the first one when Beard goes nuts. And she goes, is that the plan for the rest of your life? You're just going to walk away from everything. The second that it isn't fun or easy, Jordan, I think the writers here tell you who Keeley's going to end up with. Like, I, I really, it feels like it would be very strange for them to put this wording into an episode where 
Roy doesn't end up with Keely. And, I, and the more I thought about this, the more it made more sense for me. Jamie's young, right? Jamie's going to find somebody that he can make happy. And I think that's maybe a, a road that they eventually cross is that while I think Keely likes Jamie, she really cares about Jamie. She loves Roy, I think. And I think to Roy's older, it makes more sense. I think the writers see that as more of like, but I do, I think this is more of that bounce back. And she's having this dilemma where, you know, Jamie is sweet. Jamie is kind. And there's so much focus where everybody thinks she's going to end up with Jamie. But I think this wording here is what I mentioned. I think it just sold me. I was like, she's going to end up with Roy. I guarantee it. Now, I just said a couple minutes ago. Yeah. That I think she's going to end up with Jamie. But also, what if she ends up with no one? That's true. I, I do think that's a real possibility. I think it could be something like a, she doesn't need anybody, right? But um, I don't think she needs to end up with somebody. But I am curious to see how that would go. I, I do like her and Roy together better, but I don't know. I felt like I've been getting more hints to the Jamie thing. And then after a while, I'm like, we only got three episodes left. Maybe she'll end up with no one and we're kind of left lingering on where she did it's gonna be like if friends ends without rachel getting off the plane and you're like hmm, i wonder if <laughs> it off takes plane. off like i wonder if that's where they'll go with that, right we're like yeah yeah you don't know open-ended if it lasts you don't know who she ended up with maybe she's like knocking on a door and we don't see what door it is and yeah. then it just fades to black and you're like no what is it? and then there's no season four you have no clue who she ends up with make up your mind Maybe that's what it'll be, Jordan. Maybe it'll just be a, a it'll be a love triangle. Jamie, Roy, it'll be friends. That's what it'll be. It'll just be friends. It'll Jason will leave, uh, but Rebecca will still be around. They'll they'll you know go to a coffee shop and talk or, or the pub <laughs> and talk about all sorts of good stuff. Mates, right? Because uh, yeah, it's mates. British. That's what it'll be called. All right. I guess let's give our player of the week and employee of the week here so whoever you uh i'll I'll let you go first for player of the week Uh, player of the week i'm going to go with isaac because i thought that we you really get a lot from him um and you can still tell that it's all new to him much like it would be to anybody else and i think too the way that they played this situation i think is accurate to how it probably would play out the fact that like these guys are best friends like they're always together and the fact that colin just never felt comfortable to tell isaac and it really made isaac upset like this isn't this is yes this is about you know closeted people that are that are that are you know that are gay that are that have a hard time coming out but it's it's more i think about like how you know friendship and and how that all works like how you know the person that you trust the most is somebody that you should be able to go to and tell anything to so i think that's ultimately what i found that was really cool and special about this episode is that they played it more of like i thought we were really good friends and i thought you trusted me but you clearly didn't and i i want to know why why the hell didn't you tell me that which i love that confrontation that isaac has like it's not the fact that you're gay it's the fact that like why did you not feel you couldn't tell me that kind of stuff. So I love that. I thought it was really cool. You said, Isaac, I'm going to go with Colin for coming out to the team for handling everything. Uh, very great. And getting two assists and winning that game, by the way, I'm going to have to give it to Colin. All right, let's go to employee of the week. For me, it was between Will and Higgins. I'm going to go with Higgins. For his uncle joke, <laughs> it made me laugh a lot. So I, I do have to go with that. Um, I'm going to go with Beard. And only because I, I I was dying when he was <laughs> in the press conference. And he was just getting so intense. And you just see a whole different side of him when he opens up. It's like they let the, like, the, they've opened the can. And the can, like, he's just out there spewing whatever it is that he wants to spew. And it's always funny stuff because he gets so intense. Um, I think he calls, I think, uh, no, no, wait, that's Roy, I think, that calls uh, the new guy for the independent. He calls him the old, or the new Trent, old Trent, or is that beer? I couldn't remember which one that was. Uh, it's it's um, it's Roy. It's it? Roy, because he yeah. says, I, I like 
you i like you better than old trent yeah. yeah yeah but no i do i really did i thought that the whole it was it was funny it's very beard like i i love beard i think he's just like he's this guy that is quiet uh in front of everybody but ted and them and we all know the true beard like we know who he is and i i love that so i love beard now he's your favorite episode right you'd love oh, that coach beard that's what hour. sucks is like he's he's easily one of my favorite characters and it's my least favorite episode yeah all right let's go ahead and preview next week's episode or this week whatever you want to call it technically tonight's episode um okay uh international break while some of the Greyhounds head home to play for their countries in international matches, Edwin Akufo brings a business proposal to Rebecca. It's an hour and three minutes long, which I think ties the longest with Sunflowers. And for people that don't know, if you just follow us, you don't listen to our soccer shows, international breaks are where they take a break in the middle of the season, like a week or so, maybe a week and a half, and players go play for their national teams and then they come back and they resume the club period. So uh, kind of interested. What, what what do you think this proposal will be? Because he is, um, I think, the one that had the whole Dubai Air stuff going on, right? Yeah, he's the one that, uh, I think, right, that tried to get Sam? Yeah. Yeah. I want to say he wants to buy the club Ooh. from her. Like, I don't know why, but interesting. like, I feel like he wants to buy the club and this will allow Rebecca to become the parent that she's going to become, because I think that's ultimately going to happen. But yeah, I I think she, I think he'll propose to buy the club. I really do. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, that's what. Father, tech billionaire from. Maybe he wants to buy Richmond. That would be interesting. Yeah, they, I think this could, way out. You could set up the end of the show that way. Yeah. He's not going to keep Ted Lasso, no. probably. Rebecca can move on and do something with her money. Yeah. Maybe he looks to hire Nate. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how this all sets up. Like, I don't. You know, something like that. Like, I could totally see this show going on. If it had to go on for season four and Sudeikis, I think Sudeikis is done. I think that's ultimately what we, uh, what I have concluded is that he just, uh, he doesn't want to be in it. He might want to write it still, but he doesn't want to act in it. Um, but I, I could see that happening. Beard leaving with him and Brendan Hunt leaving. Um, but I could see Roy and Nate still being around. And I could see Jamie still being around. Keely still being around. Maybe Rebecca. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how it'll all play out. But I do feel like... They're really, it really is. It feels like, yes, they're closing some character arcs, but they might also be opening up some other avenues which they could go. So be interested to see what happens. All right. And after that, we have two episodes left. How much you want to bet this finale is like an hour and a half? At least. Yeah. (laughs) At least. I'm excited for it. I think it blows out the hour three minutes. I I do. I think they're going to go way past that. Like the Stranger Things finale, I think was like an hour and fifty some minutes. Oh my god, I really yeah. want Stranger Things to come back. They haven't even started filming yet. I know. Uh, <laughs> and now they have a writer strike. Um, yeah, that that is uh, the state of television right now, everyone. All right, I guess we'll wrap it up now. Uh, we're gonna get ready to go watch that episode. But thank you all for watching and listening. Like I said, if I can get that eighth episode recap up, I will. And have a great rest of your week. You can follow us at Stateside Show on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or email us statesideshow at gmail.com with any Ted Lasso feedback. And we'll catch you next time when we break down international break.